We're here going to do a video. Um, today is January 21st, 2020. Um, I'm just going to hop into the information here. Um, I'm going to give you the kind of a little bit of an update and everything about what's going on and, um, and show you a CME that happened that really nobody else is talking about. And I really can't really understand why, um, but we'll go into that here in just a minute. Um, but the first thing I'm going to talk about here, guys, I got you over at Space Weather Prediction Center. Um, this is their homepage. And um, this was brought to my attention by uh, one of my subscribers, uh, uh, Bible Sign, and also Dr. J. They um, have been emailing me and leaving comments and stuff telling me this was going to happen. And um, so I went and looked into it, and it sure enough is. And what are we talking about? Well, they're going to shut GOES 14 and 15 off on the 22nd and 23rd of January. Um, and the reason they're doing this, they're actually going to put these satellites into storage. Um, they're going to turn them back on after about a week, but then on the 31st, well, I guess they're going to leave them off for a couple days. Um, but on the third, they're going to turn them back on, but on the 31st, they're going to shut them off for good. Um, that uh, first thing I have to say here is that does not mean that we're going to lose our tools. Okay. What that means is they're just going to get the the data from a different satellite go 16 okay um, which is what it says right here now um, you know you go from having two satellites that are orbiting around the earth not in the exact same position to one satellite um, I'm not sure how this is going to work and the reason being is because it doesn't seem like we'll get as much data data points just from one satellite instead of having two up there now, they may integrate other satellite data into this um, to do their models and stuff. And the models I'm talking about are like the magnetosphere models that I show you guys all the time. And that is where they get the data from. It's from those satellites. Um, but, yeah, they're going <coughs> to... These satellites that are up there are kind of old. So, that's why they're doing this, at least the way I understand it. Now, I'm in no disillusion to think that when they shut these things down... That we may not get them back up and it may not transfer over to um it may translate actually into us losing some of our tools okay um i could most certainly see them using this as a perfect excuse to do something like that um, whether or not it happens that way that's to be seen but i did want to bring that to you guys um, i'm going to show you guys the cme here in just a second but also want to run you guys over and show you the human resonance also Okay, guys, this is Schumann Resonance. This is the mo most up-to-date one um, that I could get. And what we're seeing, guys, is our, our code, signature, whatever we want to call it, our dash line is still there. Okay. Um, and what's strange about this one particular capture here, guys, is this right here is one thing. See that line right there, the white line that's dashed also? See how it went, went to right here and stopped and then it was no more <laughs> okay and and also um the stripe signature is back okay and it's not on every one this is why i don't think it's a tool flaw because it's it's not on every every uh spike now in order for that to happen how this tool works is that it takes a an average of multiple locations and whatever that average is it plots it as a data point, okay? And a data point here gets plotted in a straight line. That's one data point. So whatever frequency it's vibrating at, at that data point, that's what it's going to show. So in order to get a horizontal line, a stripe like right here, it would have to have multiple data points. Mind you, this is an average between multiple different stations, okay? Okay. <laughs> It would have to have that same vibrational frequency that many data points in a row. Do you guys understand the odds of that? It's almost impossible. I'll just say that. Unless it's intelligently done or unless this is a tool flaw, which I don't think it is. Because if it was a tool flaw, in my mind, it would be across the whole thing and it's not. And then the next thing I noticed, guys, right there where our dash line is... It seems like most of the activity is happening from there down, okay, or lower frequency. You guys see that? Let me back. I backed it up like that so you guys could see that better. 
Doesn't look like we got much going on above that dot, that dashed line, does it? Unless there's a spike. So, you know, and we've been talking about there's probably more than one base frequency anymore. It seems as though that that's what we're seeing. Um, 7.83 is supposed to be the base for those that don't know. And also, guys, um, you know, they pump this in the ISS, the International Space Station. So, so you know, so the astronauts and stuff up there don't go crazy because it's directly related to mental health. Uh, most of us, especially guys on my channel, probably already know that. But anybody that's new, that, that's what they do. They actually pump this frequency in there. Um, if they don't, they get what they call space sickness and they go crazy. But also, you have to understand that if you went underground, the same thing would happen. Why is that? You're probably asking because this is the vibration of the earth. Well, because what we're measuring here is from the crust of the earth to the ionosphere. The ionosphere is holding this in. It's, it's almost like the cap. Okay, it's, it's the, that's what the frequency and stuff is bouncing off of. So, you know, so if you go underground, it's not there. So, yeah, it, it's, it gets a little crazy when you start thinking about actually what's actually happening here. So, just so you guys have a better understanding how this tool works, it is an average. And when they do get that one average, they plot it as one point on here in a single line. You see how you kind of can see little lines? So, each one of those little lines is a data point that it got from an average of multiple stations. So, the odds of this being able to do a horizontal line like that is astronomical. Okay, <laughs> um, but anyway, um, I just wanted to bring that to you guys. Let me know what you guys think about all this in the comment section because, man, I, I'm, I'm just showing you the observation. I really don't have any good answers for why this is happening. Okay, guys, this is that CME I was telling you about. Hardly anybody else is talking about this, and the reason why is because this fired off, you know, it's not going to hit the earth, but this was a sizable thing, okay, and, you know, when we're talking about the sun altogether, we need to pay attention to everything that it's doing, no matter what position it's in. Because, like I've said before, you know, if you get a CME, um, for example, oh, excuse me, sorry guys. For, for example, if a CME, like right here, is blowing this way, well, you can almost bet that 180 degrees, you're going to see a smaller one blow that way. So, this one that we're talking about right now was blown that way and I did see a smaller one kind of come off at this angle. So what I'm trying to say here is if we get one that's off of the back side of the sun, completely the opposite direction of Earth, chances are that we're going to see one come at us that might be smaller. All right. It could be the same size. I've never seen it do it and then be bigger um, if it's related. Okay. Now this doesn't happen every time, but it does happen often. That when we have a CME 180 degrees the other direction, we usually see a smaller one pop off. Okay. And they're usually related, like I said. But um, this right here is something that Scott put together. Um, <laughs> it's awesome. <laughs> it shows you the CME very, very well. Um, so we're going to watch this and I'll, I'll talk through it here. But as you can see, this is the view from Lasco, which is um, on the Soho Observatory, which sits out in front of the Earth and looks at the sun. Um, it's very similar to SDO in, as far as position and what it does. Uh, it, it, it's about a million miles closer to the sun than what we are, but it orbits with us around the sun. So that gives us some sense of direction here. And this, this is most definitely going off to the left, as you can see. Um, and then what, how do we know um, what angle it's going at? Well, there's a couple things. I'm, I'm going to pause this part. Um, I'll show you the... Stereo A is where we go to for that. Okay, now Stereo A, now keep it, let's go back here for a second. What we're looking at, guys, the Earth is here, way back far, all right, looking at the sun. Then the, the satellite we're getting ready to look at is over here, looking at the sun. That's Stereo A. So we'll follow this through. But as you can see, look what it does here. It even lights up our object, just so you know. <laughs> okay um scott did a great job with uh putting this together i mean it, it's i mean he never 
does anything else but a good job with this kind of stuff because man he's got some really good software and he, he's got an eye for this also so but anyway um as you can see you know now this one was strange in the fact that that's pretty obvious big right now as we uh, what we'll do is we'll watch this again but it's almost like it did two loops it's almost like this was two different ones but it wasn't okay that's what it kind of looks like, but it ain't really what happened. So, like I said, we'll watch that. You see how it's doing that? Almost like you got one on top of the other. Um, there's. I went over and looked at Stereo A on the, like, looking at the surface of the sun itself. Um, I didn't really see much there. It's hard to see on those, uh, the extreme ultraviolet um, filters that they use. Sometimes you can't really see it because the background is actually the sun so it kind of drowns it out but as you can tell guys um number one this is a slow mover all right it's not moving fast at all matter of fact even when i first reported on this i said hey this looks like a, a large filament release because it was moving so slow and then after scott took a look at it it was a full-blown cme okay um because it did it had a explosion so and, that, and that's one of the reasons why i'm doing this to correct myself on that one I thought it was just a filament release and it ended up being a complete CME, as you can tell, okay? <coughs> um, and again, there's that. Now, here's the one from Stereo A. I'm going to pause it. Now, again, we're looking from here. So, this is off to the left also. So, what's happening, and I'll show you on the CME tracker, it's actually kind of going this way. And we'll watch this for a minute here real quick. All right. There you go. Like I said... That's definitely because the earth is over here. Just so everybody knows. All right. Um, I think he slows it down here in just a second. Yeah. There's the other stereo A view. All right. It just gives you different filters that it goes through. So, yeah. I just wanted to show that to you and, uh, you know, say, say thanks to Scott for putting that together and sending it over to me. I mean, it, yeah. <laughs> Shows it really well. Okay, guys, this is the CME tracker. Um, this right here uh, is a top-down view. Here's the Earth. Here's the Sun. Okay, that green box you're seeing right there is the Parker SB probe. Okay, just so you guys know. Um, it's one of the satellites out there. It's the one that gets uh, real close to the Sun. Um, I think it was the first. It got the closest that anything had ever gotten. And it took some readings and stuff. But um, as you can tell, there's that CME right there. boom okay and you can see how in relation to the earth how it's actually traveling this way so it's not it's not going to hit us okay uh, it doesn't mean that we can't see some sort of disruption from it because we're all you know these these lines these dashed lines you see are the imf lines it's our connection to the sun and other celestial objects um so anything that interrupts any of that the residual of it, if it'll vibrate through to us too. We may not see a big disruption and we may not see hardly anything noticeable at all. But the fact of the matter is, it, anything that does happen right there um, has the potential to affect us at least a little bit. But we're not expecting anything from this. Okay. Um, and if you look over here, you can see that red box is Stereo A. You can see how Stereo A is going to take a hit right to it. Boom. Okay. Um, so that is the direction that's going. Thank God it ain't coming towards us because we've been having those cracks in the magnetosphere. We sure as heck don't need one of these at us right now. Um, they're just, just saying. So, but yeah. So anyway. All right, guys. So um, I am going to end it there. Um, and again, I'm sorry I didn't post a video yesterday, but again, I'm trying to help family out and all that kind of a thing. Um, I, I do have some surgery coming up next week. Um, I'm having all my teeth taken out and, uh, yeah, that's going to be all fun. I got like 20 teeth left. They're just going to yank them all. Um, yeah, sounds like a whole lot of fun, doesn't it? <laughs> anyway, I'm not going to go into that detail. You know, I'm sure you guys don't want to hear that mess anyway. Um, but anyway, um, what you're seeing here, guys, is that CME. Is it going to affect us? Probably not, but we still need to pay attention to it. Just, just for the fact that it most definitely is another example how our object can affect stuff and also that you know our sun will is eventually going to wake back up 
okay? Um, it may not happen within the next few months, but it, it is slowly starting to become more active. Um, we are expecting a solar wind stream um, here today, I think. Um, it's not supposed to be huge, um, but, you know, looking at the, the solar wind, we most definitely got to pay attention to cosmic rays right now because we've had an extended period of time with low solar wind. And I'm talking, when I'm talking about low, I'm talking about low 300, like in the 250s, um, staying consistently that low. When it, and that's just not normal. Even during minimum time, it's usually not like that. Usually the lowest we see is right around 300. So when it gets below that, that's really kind of extre extreme low. Um, what does that mean? Well, it just means low geomagnetic activity, which opens us up to more cosmic rays and anything else that wants to hit us. So, <laughs> but um, yeah, so I am going to end it there. Um, God bless. Yeshua saves and um, you can drink this Kool-Aid. Okay, guys. One more thing before I get off here. Sorry about that. Um, I did want to um, show you guys a new channel. Scott's new channel. Um, it's called Project Disclosure. Um, I, I showed you guys it yesterday or my last video and left you a link. I'll leave you a link here too. Um, again, um, it's not just about uh, Planet X stuff. He's reporting on everything. And it, it, it he does it in a really well uh, formed way. So I, I would suggest anybody going over there and checking this out. But what I want to show you guys is, you know, we talk about how they sometimes, a lot of the time, try to basically shadow ban things or try to hide stuff, uh, hide channels, whatever, especially when it comes to these kinds of subjects, truth or subjects or what have you. I'm going to give you, I'm going to show you guys exactly what happens. Okay. Um, I got you over here. This is just my regular YouTube. All right. This is what I would see if I brought my stuff up. Okay. So what I'm going to do. I went to the search engine, and I hit project, oops, project disclosure, okay, I hit search, what happens, it is nowhere to be found, okay, so unless you know exactly where you're going, you're not going to find that channel, and this, this is what we're talking about, because it shouldn't be this way. All right, we got something right here, right here, right in front of us. This was posted two years ago. Why is that there and not the new channel there? You know what I'm saying? And his channel has already got like over 1,500 subscribers, so it's not like it's it wasn't growing for it to be on a, a higher recommended list because it is. All right, and do do me a favor and go over and subscribe up to that if you would, please. Um, you know, if you get there and you watch a few of the videos and you don't like it, you know, I'm sure Scott would tell you the same thing. Just unsubscribe and leave. I mean, it, it's really that simple. Um, you know, again, this just more things to show you guys that they are doing this and this is real. This is a real thing that they do. Um, and again, there's only five or six videos he's got up over there, but he's going to build, he'll build that and, um. He's doing it daily and all that, so it's just like a daily news feed. That's what I would use it for. Um, that's just my opinion. And he's going to touch on subjects that they won't touch on a lot of other channels. Just saying. Um, he does do that. That's one thing that he's good at doing, and that's what he does. So uh, I would suggest all of you guys going over and checking it out. Um, and I'll leave a link. But <laughs> let me show you. Okay, so I'll go over here to mine, and I'll just scroll through all the ones I subscribe to here. And we'll find it. All right. It's down here somewhere. Um, and we'll go to it just so you guys know what it looks like. Um, the icon's pretty cool. It's right here. We'll go to home, project disclosure. And you see, you see the videos he's got there right now. Um, it's got 1.59 thousand subs already, um, which is great. I mean, and again, click the bell. I already did. You guys, check it out, man. Um, if you, and again, if, if you don't like it, just unsubscribe. I mean, it's as simple as that. But go give it a chance. Go over and check it out. Anyway, God bless. Yeshua saves, and uh, you can drink this Kool-Aid.